Our grants programs kicked off in 2004 with our editorial grants. And 2009, we introduced the creative grants. And throughout all that time, and up to and including 2014, we'll have given out close to a million dollars in grants. The creative grant came about ostensibly to help smaller nonprofits who don't have the benefit of large marketing departments and large budgets to be able to do perhaps smaller but effective ways of promoting their cause. It is an ideas competition that is realized through great visuals, whether that is photography or it's video or even illustration. The judging process is often um, quite heated and it's quite interesting being a fly on the wall or trying to keep uh, the melee together as it happens. Uh, we're lucky enough to have had a number of very senior creatives from ad agencies and from magazines giving their time to sit down for a long afternoon and help in the uh, choosing of the winners of the creative grants. My job is to ensure that the judging takes place and that it's even and even-handed, but my opinion I have to keep to myself. However, obviously you do develop favourites, and I certainly remember the work of Sam Faulkner when it came through. The idea that they brought to the table, which became the Stop the Cut campaign, was incredibly effective. <laughs> The idea behind being able to change opinions about female genital mutilation is a very bold and strong position to take and to do it in a, in a country where it is rampant and to do it through portraiture and to do it with a poster campaign but that is executed in country within a small time frame I thought was brilliant. Linka Odom's project was very arresting, a pathway that meandered outside of a German hospital that was full of backlit cabinets full of pictures and they were images of patients and doctors in an area of northern India with a view to encouraging the doctors at the said German hospital to be driven to sign up to do charity work out there as well. Another memorable entry was Klaus Timon's project that he did in conjunction with Mother of London, uh, Project Pressure, which was documenting the devastation of the glaciers through glacial melt. Project Pressure represents an archive of pictures that bring to life the world as it exists now. Crucially, it helps us to understand the true beauty and scale of what we stand to lose. As part of its mission, Project Pressure has expanded by developing technology that allows the crowdsourcing of images, collecting new and historic photos that paint a rich picture of the changes we're seeing. I've been really impressed with the calibre of the entries, certainly as they've improved over the last few years. I've also been really happy to see an increase in the amount of motion, uh, a lot of people embracing video and multimedia pieces to tell these complex stories. What we've seen in terms of it growing in impact of ideas, in impact of visuals, has been breathtaking. And I think that now people have spread their wings in the way that we'd want them to in thinking about the kind of projects we're looking for. So I think the next five years should be really interesting. <laughs>